Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today we want to return to the subject of this, the GLI Comet Pro. This is that KVM device that we talked about something like a month ago now, it might be a little bit more, uh, that took to crowdfunding. And with a few days left to go on the project, I wanted to return to this, one, in case you were still on the fence about it and wondering whether to back this, or that you're backing it and starting to get cold feet, and ultimately help you decide whether to back this or leave this. Now, at the time of recording, there's about four or five days left on the campaign, so Presumably when this video goes out, there'll be maybe two or three days left at best. And at the moment, they're just about to cross the $800,000 mark. There's been, I think, seven or eight individual updates down. We'll go into the qual quality and quantity of those in a moment. And around 230 to 240 comments. And even if we're looking at this just as a crowdfunding campaign, because remember, we are talking about crowdfunding, we're not talking about traditional retail, it's been fairly standard in terms of its running with regular updates there, responses to backers in the comments. And although this isn't anything comparable to something like a Ugreen NAS crowdfunding, I will say it's been a fairly smooth sailing ship. Um, the majority of the updates, I'm not going to say were especially interesting for the... The, probably the main thing they were talking about, and again, this doesn't really appeal to me, but I know there is an audience for that, was the publishing of numerous different plans to 3D print brackets for one or more of these devices in your rack and mini rack setup. Now, I don't have a 3D printer. I'm not able to ascertain and test those out. And people seem quite grateful to receive those 3D prints there because presumably a lot of those homegrown home lab setups there quite like that sort of thing. Again, you can download them anyway. You can go to those update pages and actually download those 3D prints without backing the campaign, although it'd be a bit weird if you did because it's sort of very specific to this device. But at the very least, they're still giving those and still working those out. Sorry, I'm just going to clumsily insert this here because I finished the recording and I've just realised I didn't say it. GLI.net isn't paying for this review. They've sent this stuff. They've got no control over the things I'm saying. These are my words. Again, I forgot to add this at the beginning, so I'm just going to clumsily slam this here in the middle. Another thing I'll highlight is one of the other updates actually went through the production process that's happening right now. Three stages of that, and it does look like, because they, they've already sent some of these out to reviewers like me, but also... It was very clear to them that this was going to be a mainline product. Obviously, when it does hit traditional retail, the pricing isn't going to be as enticing as it is right now. But at the very least, it's clearly a product intended for full featured release. Now, it's going through. Um, it's already complete design, uh, completed design valuation testing, and then it's moving into engineering. And finally, it's going to be going into product validation testing according to the update. Um, there is numerous images there of the device going through production. And there was uh, an event taking place over in the US, I think in Washington, about a week, week and a half ago. It was one of their big anniversary events. And I think more information uh, was revealed on this device and its production and the long-term plans for the brand on this uh, during that event. I was wasn't able to attend. I was invited, but I wasn't able to attend. But again, if you were there, do let me know in the comments what was covered, and hopefully the brand will be putting out their own official video detailing more about that event and their plans towards KVM devices long term. Now, on the software side of things with the GLI Net KVM software, it's worth keeping in mind that this isn't their first rodeo. It's not their first keyboard video mouse device. It's technically their third, but they've already had the application out there for a while. Client, desktop tool, and the individual firmware for different devices, some of which we'll go through in just a moment, that have seen promotion during this, um, this last few weeks. But moreover, just that they've become generally more available and feature rich. Now, the Comet Pro software there is the same software software that's going to be running on this. This is the Comet POE, and there was the Comet that came before it. So that software has already been around for a while prior to the launch of this device and has seen software testing, community software testing and firmware and bug checks. And if you go through the community pages, again, I will say much like the crowdfunding campaign, uh, campaign, the brand has been responding to people, has been taking user feedback. There was even, for example, an entry on there where although users are happy that this integrates Tailscale into its operating system, alongside uh, as an, uh, a plugin for its operating system that you run within this device, they wanted to see things like uh, WireGuard and other remote access protocols and services to be integrated into it. And some users already go into the trouble of creating their own homebrew workarounds in order to boot it in when you set the device up within that software. Now, we can ascertain from a lot of those comments that a number of these apps and services are going to be added in a later version from official uh, GLI Net uh, staffers, which is good to see. 
Nevertheless, we're still yet to see just what extent that's going to be, because at the moment, I've not seen many large-scale software revisions actually being rolled out for this. I think there's only been two updates to the beta software that I'm running on this. Obviously, when it rolls out, it's going to have a final completed RC or complete version, but there's not been a huge number of software updates aside from hot fixes and stuff in the background rather than stuff in the foreground and more formal apps and add-ons there. But while we're on the subject of add-ons, it's worth discussing three specific things. The PoE adapter, the Comet PoE, and the Fingerbot. So let's start with the PoE adapter. One of the earliest criticisms this device got was as useful as it is because it's got an HDMI in and out. That means it can be permanently stationed on a specific workstation or workstations. But at the same time, a lot of users were like, it's so low powered at that USB 5, um, at the 5 volt, that why didn't you just integrate PoE? Now, within the first few weeks of the crowdfunding, they rolled out this as an add-on here. This is their PoE to USB-C adapter there. It's branded, it arrived in its own fancy little retail box there. And it allows you to um, deploy this device via standard PoE output from your switch. Maybe you've got a unified job or something a bit more Billy really basic. Now, I'm glad to see this, but you have to get it as an optional extra. Now I get it, not everyone would have used it, so them rolling out investment in including this in every package, I can understand the problem there. But this is already a branded device. This is already a device that arrives in a retail box, and I got this a couple of weeks ago from them because I wanted to talk about this more. But this you have to pay an additional $14 for. Now, I think there's a lot of users that would have liked to, on day one, had these bundled together. And I would argue, if you back this project now, you can get it added as an extra for that $14. But it's clear this was already on the roadmap, and therefore, this should have been available as an option at the beginning. So much so, by the way, that when they did roll out this as an add-on, as a little extra that you can add to your order via the crowdfunding uh, backing, they actually even had to make a YouTube video because it was just a, no, I'm not gonna say complicated, but it wasn't as straightforward as click basket. They even had to go out their uh, way to add that video to their YouTube channel because people were responding to comments, uh, comments to the update saying, how on earth do I add this to my order? So I like that it's there and I'm glad they've integrated it because there's definitely a demand. And I understand why they didn't just include it with every one of them because it would have upped the price. But I just think, this should have been available to users on day one. Which brings us on to the second accessory update, and that is the GLI Net Comet PoE. Now, we've already done a review of this device, and ultimately, it upscales practically everything about the original Comet box. This allowed for a large amount of storage, faster EMMC storage, uh, slightly revised and improved upon in terms of efficiency memory, it's just a better device overall, and I haven't even got into the much better CPU inside here. This is pretty much comparable to the internal hardware configuration in this, with the difference being that this is available to buy via traditional retail right now. You don't have to go crowdfunding. You don't have to get that slightly eggy feeling from going Kickstarter, but of course you miss out on an LCD display, you miss out on HDMI in and out simultaneously, and although it's a very well put together device and as a PoE KVM, the construction is very, very nice using the same software as that device, I would still argue that this is just a little bit more fully featured right now, and you can, of course, via the crowdfunding page, add this to your order, but again, similar, but I don't know quite why this is an extra when it's a traditional retail product. Just let this stand on its own two feet. Conflict, conflicting this in with the marketing of this is just going to cause people to get indecisive. And finally, I talked about this when we did the full review of the KVM Pro, but the Fingerbot. Now, the Fingerbot, for me, I love this little sod. It's a weird name. Well, I mean, what could you call it? But ultimately, this is a device that arrives with a small battery compartment inside and arrives with a small Bluetooth connected dongle that you attach to the rear of the accessory kit there, and it allows you to remotely, anywhere in the world, press a physical button. Now, this allowed me, when I was over in Germany um, for the IFA event, to power on a system I had here in the UK when I was over there because I'd realized some of my template files for my editing weren't available. 
I like this little box. I almost, I think the pricing is a little higher than it needs to be, but at the same time, it is a very niche product. And therefore, there's an argument, you know, with scarcity comes increased production costs. Um, but at the same time, I really like this and it worked both on the LAN and remotely over the internet really easily as hopefully you can see there on screen. With the different multi uh, kind of configuration options there in terms of the depth of the press as well as the length of the press as well. And it allowed me to have a system back up and running from cold boot and KVM in all via the same client app on my system. Bottom line, if you ask me, has there been significant noticeable development on this product and its software in the month or so that this crowdfunding has been taking place? I'd probably say no in terms of front end stuff. In the back end with hot fixes, improvements, optimization and more, there's been loads. And indeed, because it arrived in the market, frankly, very fully formed, there wasn't a vast amount to be done at this stage within the confines of this hardware. So saying me saying that there's not been a vast amount of software development in the front end, you know, in terms of feature set, isn't necessarily a bad thing. It meant that much like when I said in my early review, this arrived pretty much fully formed out the gate. And now it's just going through mass production. I do think the way they have approached accessories and optional extras and bundles has been messy and seemingly added at the 11th hour in a way that I think if they just rolled that out on day one, it would have been a great deal more appealing. I like the PoE adapter. I think it feels rugged, it feels robust, it does the bloody job and it works out of the box. But this should have been a day one extra because it would have allowed users right now who have purchased this to maybe even gone down that road or some of the few criticisms that people have found, myself included, of this device would have been remedied. And also releasing this at the same time as this, man, that is a lot of IP to throw out at the same time that are overlapping their audience ever so slightly. Bottom line, it's still a very, very good KVM. And I'm going to be reviewing two or three more KVMs before the end of the year. And of all of them, this one is still the front runner as far as I'm concerned. Again, it's linked below if you want to take advantage of the crowdfunding there. On top of that, they're almost certainly going to go for late backing there. But it generally means you miss out on some of the better pricing early doors. It will see traditional retail. There's just too much effort here for them to not take this to traditional retail. So if you're a bit skeptical about crowdfunding, you don't mind waiting another three to six months and pay a little bit more, then don't bother engaging with that crowdfunding. But the rest of you, I've seen no reason why they're not going to deliver on this product. They've delivered on their products before and they've got too long a reputation to send to a dumpster fire off the back of this device. So Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. We'll keep an eye on this product as well. And next week when I'm over in Shenzhen, I'm hoping to meet with the people over at GLINet to find out more about what exactly they're planning long term. And are they going to expand even further into KVM or are we going to see something perhaps a touch more router based? But we'll have to wait and see. Thank you so much for watching. The link's in the description. I'll see you next time.